Well, guys, welcome back to Red River Living. The weather's really not cooperating with us, but we've got a local guy here that's helping us. We go to church with him and drills water wells for us, and he is our brains behind this project today. Jared and I kind of know what we're up to, but we're too dangerous to be doing this alone. So we've got our local guy here with us. He's with Harrison Drilling here um, out of Oklahoma. If anybody was interested in a water well, y'all contact him. We'll have a link. As I told you, the weather was rolling in on us. I don't know what we're going to end up running into here. But anyway, we're trying to get our water well system set up with our tank, our holding tank system. But we're going to have to come in and replumb the inside of the water house here. As you can tell, we've got the well filter, we've got our pressure tank, and then we've got our water softener here. We're going to add another pump in here, and we're going to add it to where we can turn some switches, some valves, to where we can control our water a little bit better. guys as you can see we have our tank set up right here it's been quite the process as y'all saw we had the guy who actually drilled our water well came back in to perform this work for us this was not something that i really knew a whole lot about one of the things that we did was y'all saw where we took a road trip and went and actually bought used tanks in purchasing these tanks there was no chemicals supposedly put in them or whatever but we noticed that the tanks were dirty. We initially started setting them up when we noticed this and had to re-put them back on the trailer. And Jared actually crawled off in the tanks and took a scrub brush to them and scrubbed them out and got the water to them. Best I could tell, it looked like the lids had probably been off of them and leaves had been falling down in them. That's what it looked like. But anyway, for our um, peace of mind, Jared manned up for us and climbed off into them. And, You'll see a video where he didn't just climb off into it, he slid head first. Are you diving head first? I don't think that's a smart idea. Oh no. <laughs> you got in there, you can fit. Does that count as a dirty job? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. We've um, got the tanks are set in place now here at our property. Um, we're actually filling up right now and the tank is hot right up here and it gets really cold right here. So we're probably about two thirds full right now in water and it's been running most of the day. And what this is going to allow us to do is have our well made five gallons a minute. Y'all have seen some footage of that. That's just barely enough water to run a household, but it's not enough to run the washing machine and take a shower. You, you takes a little while to rinse off in the shower with that kind of pressure. So really what this is for, so we could do multiple things at one time. What we're going to do is we're going to go inside the well house and I'm going to try to talk y'all through what we had done here. So guys, here inside the well house, here's our well. And this was three quarter 
inch or half inch pecs right here that came into our filter. This was our first uh, filter system right here. And it's basically a paper filter for catching sediment. Then it turned right here. And then this, all this white line is our new line. This here is one inch pecs now. Um, we're still feeding the half inch pecs up to the water tank. And as you can tell, this valve is off right now. Um, so instead of our house system running off the well, it's feeding the tank. But here, it still is going to run through our pressure tank. And we had reasons for doing this so that we had like a dual system here now if we needed it. So the water feeds into the tank and then the water comes back from the tank right here into our pump on the floor, the red pump you see right here. Um, Jared just showed you a shot of the water filling the tank. And filling the tank, you saw that there were some objects inside the tank. So those objects inside the tank are two different shutoff valves. One of them is for low water shutoff, and the other one is for the high water. Once the tank fills, then that valve kicks on and shuts the system down to where the, the well pump kicks off at that point. You can adjust these floats right here. And that's where the electrical power is coming in right here and ties in inside the well house. Like your low water, if you wanted to set it at 2,000 gallons, you just set it higher. If you want to be able to use more water, but say you wanted to at least have a thousand gallons always left in the tank, your well pump went out, then you set that at a thousand gallons so that it shuts off and you've got a thousand gallons. And you'd know there was something going on in the house, you wouldn't have no water. Come out here and check, you find out which pump is broken, either your well pump or your uh, pressure pump right there. But that's what these two wires are for. One is for to shut it off if it was to be drained too much. That way you wouldn't go empty. The other one is a fill so that you don't overfill your tank. And that was some of the stuff that I just really didn't know anything about. And that was what Bradley was able to um, fix for us. And we'll kind of show you at the inside of how this is wired. And I'll be honest with you guys, he was telling me what he was going to do. And it was simple because it's like a light switch. You just got to have a break in it when it goes on and off. But I didn't quite grasp everything about that. So I was showing you our fill line up top. Then this is the line right here where the water will come out of the tank. It goes back into the well house and it'll hit that red pump in there. And that's the pump now that's going to drive our water system. This is just a reservoir now for us. When we need water right now, it's going to come out of the tank. Once it drops so far, then the well will kick on to refill it. But this here is how we will provide water to the house, to the yard, to the cows and the chickens in the garden and all. So guys, this is where that inch and a quarter line is feeding out of that uh, holding tank out there, the black tank. That water will come in right here. It goes into our red line pump. That's a 115 volt uh, pump. And it can be 230, but we've got it hooked up on 110. That pump can make about 23 gallons a minute now. So our well is only making, hey, five gallons a minute. That's all our well makes is five gallons a minute. So as I was telling you, depending on what you're running, if you're just running a water hose out here on the ground, it'll produce more than five gallons a minute without having some kind of restrictor on it, a sprinkler head. Um, just like inside your house, your shower head gives you some restriction to your system. But what this is gonna allow us to do is gonna allow us to be able to do multiple things at one time. Um, of course, we don't wanna to try to run and go through 3,000 gallons of water a day. That's not the object here. The object here, when we did this, one, to kind of give us some peace of mind in case something happened. We had some water stored here. If this pump went out and it took two days to get it fixed, the well pump, then we were without water for two days. And the way we've set it up um, with it being a dual system, and that was kind of the hard part. Even talking with Bradley, he said normally he would not have set them up to where you could run off of either pump 
and that's why our plug system is kind of done this way. Like I said, I don't quite understand all of it. Bradley made it happen though, to where once the tank goes too low, then it kicks off. If it's too high, once it fills, then the other switch kicks off. So anyway, as you can tell right here, we're about to have to change this filter right here. And I, I don't have mine wrote down when I changed it last, but that's been months. And that's how much sediment we got coming in right now. But that's all this is, a sediment filter. I do believe one of the next things that we're going to do here at Red River Living is we're going to take some water samples. I took the water to the health department and the health department checked it for E. coli, but they couldn't tell me anything else. So I think what we're going to do next is we're going to pull a water sample coming out of the well and send that off to Texas A&M and find out our particles per million. Because we know we've got so many some particles and we need to know what those are. And in the future, depending on if it's safe or not, because um, most of the water we use is just for washing and cleaning. Uh, most of the water we do drink is bottled water, but we do drink some of this. So I do want to know to make sure there's not something in it that we shouldn't. And instead of using a paper filter, maybe we need to have carbon filters or something. So <clears throat> in the future, y'all probably hear something, me get back with you on that part of this. The red line pump sends it through here. We're still got, using our pressure tank. Then that water feeds back up over here. And this is where it goes out either to the frost freeze into the yard to water, or it comes up. And we went ahead and put us in another particle filter here just to um, be able to see um, if we start developing any kind of dirt or anything inside our tank or anything. So that'll be what this filter right here is. From here, the water goes into our softener, which is right behind me. The softener system we had put in when we built the houses. So we have a water softener, and then once it goes through the water softener, then it comes into this line. This is the line that the plumbers put in and that line runs to the house to feed the house system right there. And as you can tell, we have shutoff valves in different places here. So if we had a water leak at the house, we could turn that valve off right there and the water would be shut off to the house. If, you, if we needed to, we can shut this valve off right here and this valve shuts off everything on the outside um, to the garden, to the yards and everything. It's what this valve is for. So we have the capability and that was one of the things that um, when we were talking with Bradley that we wanted to be able to do. We wanted to be able to isolate stuff if we needed to. So it took a little extra time um, and effort on his part, but he accomplished everything that we wanted done here. Well, guys, as always, we appreciate you watching. These black tanks right here, you can pick these up just about anywhere, any size you want. Uh, usually your billfold might decide just how much tank you need or whatever. The pump was a red line pump. We'll have that link down there in the bottom. And guys, if you um, are needing a well or you already have a well dug, but you need some service done to it, I'd highly recommend Harrison Drilling out of Oklahoma. Um, these guys really, Bradley really came through for us and really has done us a fine job here. So if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to ask those. I'll try to answer them best I can. This was not somewhere where I had any kind of expertise and I felt like we really ought to call somebody in to make this happen. But anyway, guys, as always, we appreciate y'all watching. We appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe, and we'll see y'all next time.